So I just built this app that takes any video from TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube, downloads that video, transcribes it, and the entire thing was built using exclusively GPT-5. We planned the entire build using CodeSpring and generated requirement docs, fed them to the AI, and I didn't need to write a single prompt. Now in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you exactly how I built it. It's also built on top of the CodeSpring boilerplate, which means it has the website already created, user accounts are already built in, with security fully integrated, and the ability to accept payments. So if you follow along this tutorial, you could build exactly the same thing, deploy it, and start getting paid customers today. So without any further ado, I'm going to show you how I built it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is plan out our project using CodeSpring. Now in this tutorial, we are going to build this exclusively with GPT-5. We are going to put GPT-5 through its paces, and we're going to give you an honest feedback review on how well GPT-5 handles itself with development. So the first thing we need to do is plan out the name of our app, describe what we're building, and then list the core features. So we're going to enter a video URL download that video, convert the mp4 to mp3, and then send that to gpt 40 transcribe. And we're going to use the model gpt 40 mini transcribe. Then what we're going to do is select our starter template. Now, if you're a beginner with CodeSpring, go ahead and grab a subscription down below, but I recommend you use the CodeSpring starter kit to get started. So we're going to let AI generate us a plan on how to build this product, and we're going to come back once this is done. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Well, what CodeSpring's done is it's planned out our app build, and it's planned it out based on the boilerplate inside CodeSpring. So first of all, it's planned out the tech stack that's needed. Now this tech is very specific to the boilerplate and also specific to the features that we're trying to build. So you can see here, we've got this library that's going to be used to download the video. And then we've got this stuff here, which is basically explaining how to actually integrate with OpenAI. And then what it's done is it's taken all of the different features and it's broken them down into individual cards. So we've got the ability to enter a video URL, download the video, convert that video to an MP3, and then finally try transcribe it. So I want you to think of this app as Google Translate for Code. What it does is enables you to explain exactly how your app works in English and then CodeSpring will figure out how to build it so you can have the instructions on building it. So if we come into one of these, for example, you can see the AI has already planned out the features. So this step sends the MP3 file to OpenAI to transcribe. Then what we're going to do is set this up as a server action. So I added this bit in myself. You can go ahead and update and change these as much as you want. Now it's really, really crucial here that you give as much instruction as possible. Okay, so for example, here we said this converts the downloaded MP4 file to an MP3 file. We'll take this URL for the downloaded MP4, convert it to an MP3, and then that resulting MP3 file will then be used to convert and transcribe the audio, okay, which is going to be this feature here. But what we're going to do now is we're going to click on this little plus button and we're going to generate what's called a product requirement doc. And this is really the Google Translate for code section. We're going to generate a requirement doc for this one. And we're finally going to generate a requirement doc for this one as well. So what we're doing is we're creating massive translation documents that convert our plan into text that the AI can then understand. So you can see here it's describing the overview of our feature. It's describing how we're going to put that together. Also, for example, the UI components as well. And all of that has been trained off the documentation that we've just written. Okay, so we can see that this document has translated this thing into code speak. And it's doing that for each one of our features. So while it's doing that, we now need to set up our project. So we're going to come into our main section here, we're going to copy this. And what this is going to do is it's going to help us download our boilerplate. So what we're going to do is come into cursor, we're going to come into our terminal, we're going to write git clone paste the link for the boilerplate and give our app a name and then hit enter. And then we're just going to open up that folder. Now what we're going to do is run our app. We're going to come back to our browser and we're going to head to localhost 3000. And just like that, we've cloned the template. Now this template has, like you can see here, the website's already been built, user accounts already set up and linked to a database. So once you build your app on top of this, you can just go ahead and deploy it. People can sign up and also they can pay to use your app as well. So if we come into the dashboard, you can see we've already got the navigation panel set up. It's a very traditional style of a normal web application. Down here, we've got the ability to upgrade. We also have credits. So if you want to charge people to use your app, you have that. And also you can go ahead and log in and log out. Now this is where we're going to be building the main section of our app. So we can actually get started building now. So what we need to do is come to our CodeSpring account. And we're just going to come and we're going to download all of these requirement docs that we just generated. Cool. Now we're going to come back into cursor, we're going to create a new folder, and we're going to call it PRD, we're then going to come to finder, we're going to drag these downloads, and we're just going to paste them into this folder here. So what we're going to do now is finally, we're going to get started building and we're going to use GPT-5 and just see what it can do for us. So the first thing we're going to do is probably we want to build the enter your video URL. So all I'm going to do is say in the and then I'm going to tag 
the dashboard page, which has already been created for us if you use the boilerplate. And I'm going to say, please build me this feature. And then I'm going to tag PRD. Okay, cool. So it looks like it has now completed. GPT-5 is actually coming up with some really cool stuff. So it has already started to plan out the database, which is quite cool. And that's all because we've used this requirement doc from CodeSpring. Now, for the sake of this video, we're not actually going to set up a database just because it takes a little bit longer. But it's really cool that it's just taken that on board and it's understood the code base. And because we're using the CodeSpring boilerplate, you can see it's already created a table for us for the URL submissions. And all of that has been done and already pre-built and integrated because we're using the code spring boilerplate which is incredible but it seems to be very good in terms of context and understanding the current code base so we're just going to go ahead and accept these changes and you can see here if we come into the dashboard we've already integrated it into the dashboard now we're going to go one step further and we're just going to screenshot this dashboard here and we're just going to send it to gpt5 and we're going to see how well it does and handles ui improvements so we're just going to say please improve the, we also want to remove these things as well. But what's actually quite fascinating is how well it's just integrated its design into the existing UI without just breaking everything, which is quite cool. It's also created the folders. So you've got URL confirmation and URL input form, which again is designed inside our boilerplate. We've got the input form and the URL confirmation. So that has been created based off the requirement. So all we're gonna do now is say, create a nice UI that's a bit more interesting. All right, so we let that go ahead and create the UI. I haven't seen yeah, let's see what it's come up with. Cool, much nicer, much cleaner. It's organized things a lot better. So what it's gonna do now is we need to go ahead and actually build the functionality. We've got the video URL input form. Now what we want to do is build the download video feature. So we're gonna come back to our app. We're gonna say at PRD download video, please build this feature for us. I'm also going to say don't worry about databases and we're just going to let it go off and do that and what you'll see is it's going to create us probably some new UI components which is hopefully going to enable us to download these videos and maybe it will show a preview of that video and then once all of that's done again it's all going to integrate directly and perfectly into our app. Okay cool so we're just going to let that go and we'll come back once this is done. So what it's done is it's created the download video actions so hopefully what this will do if we come into our app is when we give it a URL it should send it off and then download that video. So we're actually gonna go ahead and test this, but before we do, once we've downloaded the video, so what we need to do is convert from an MP4 to an MP3 file. So we're just gonna get that started. We're gonna say, great, now the downloaded video needs to be converted from MP4 to MP3. And we're gonna do PRD, convert MP4 to MP3. And you can see just how easy it is to build when you plan out first using CodeSpring. It literally is, Google Translate for code. It turns our plan for what we want to build into documentation. And then from that documentation, we can just get the AI to build it for us. So we're going to come to the CodeSpring app TikTok account, and we're just going to grab this video here. Today we're introducing CodeSpring. So we're just going to grab the URL for this, and we're just going to come into here, and we're going to just see what happens. So if we come to the node section, we can see what's going to happen when we run our app. And we're just going to paste this in here and submit this. And it says error submitting. And we can see we've got some error relation to URL submissions doesn't exist. Now I'm wondering whether this is an issue with the fact that it tried to build the URL submissions database schema uh, and obviously that's not been set up. So we're going to just accept these changes. So now we have the convert MP4 to MP3 built. So we've currently got download video actions, URL submission actions and convert MP4 to MP3. We're going to copy this error here, give it to GPT-5 and we're going to say we are not building the database for this. So at and then the URL submissions doesn't exist. Which you can say stop trying to connect to the database. But basically what this means now is our app is 75% completed. We've got the end of the video URL done. We've got the download video stuff coded. We've got the convert MP4 to MP3 coded. All we need to do now is transcribe that audio with GPT-40 mini. Let's just accept these changes first and let's just see if it has fixed that thing. So if we go ahead and we try and submit this URL, it says URL was submitted successfully. Okay, so it looks like that stuff has now been completed. What we're going to do is actually test if this works. So we're going to copy the URL here. We're going to come back into our app and we're just going to paste in the URL and click on submit. 
and you can see it says the URL was submitted successfully, but we haven't got any information that this has worked. And this is where you need to get used to. And if you watch, if you grab a Code Spring subscription and you watch the courses, especially if you watch module four, you'll understand a little bit more about how to code using cursor. So what we're going to do is just explain the error we're having. And this is the really cool thing with Code Spring is because of how it actually plans everything out for us, it makes it very easy to debug problems. Okay, because we know we've got these four files here. Right. We also know from those from the requirement docs that we've generated what these different files do. So for example, when I submit a URL in the input form, which is this one here, and I click submit, it needs to send the URL to the URL submissions action, right? It also needs to send this URL to the download video actions. The resulting URL needs to be a MP4 and should be converted to MP3, and then it tells you how to convert it, right? We need there's something in our UI to tell us this is happening, and then what we're going to do is tag the documentation. So at PRD, download video, convert MP4, and enter video URL. And we're just going to send that off. And because that documentation exists and because we're just guiding it, it gives the AI a lot more structured approach to follow. One thing I will say so far as I've been using GPT-5 is using GPT-5 inside Cursor is it doesn't feel any better than using something like Gemini 2.5 Pro. It is okay. It's not mind-blowing. It seems to be doing a fairly good job at things. It doesn't seem to be hallucinating loads. It seems to be quite precise in what it's creating. But if you compare it to something like Claude for Opus, when you use it inside Claude code, it's being able to you know read a massive code base and just read between the lines and figure things out for you. It's just not able to do that inside Cursor. So I still think Claude code 4.1 Opus is better. But GPT-5 is still pretty good. So we're going to run a new test. It looks like it's come up with some cool UI. So we're going to submit this, and it's actually showing us the logs in the front end. Now, this never I've never actually seen a language model do this before. This is really, really cool. So we can see it downloaded. It then tried to convert it, but it failed during conversion. So what I've done here is I've just tagged the documentation for that conversion, also tagged the file that manages that conversion, which is this file here, and then I've given it the logs from the terminal, and it's now going ahead and fixing it for us. Again, all of this is possible because we're using CodeSpring, because of the requirement docs, and those requirement docs are telling us which files to create. So it just makes our code so easy to be structured. And one of the things that's really cool about CodeSpring is the fact that you have access to all of these courses. And these courses are going to teach you all of the bits in between that you may otherwise get stuck on, and it's going to show you exactly how to use CodeSpring and understand file structure and things like that. So it's made those changes. Let's accept those changes. Let's come back to our app. Let's resubmit it. Input is not a valid mp4 okay we can actually copy the logs from here and again we're going to send those back through i'm trying to test this if you were somebody who doesn't really know what you're doing can you get ai to fix it just by feeding the bugs back in and getting it to fix those problems and so far it looks like gpt5 is doing a pretty good job at figuring things out now this is a typically quite a complicated thing to get working i've tried to do mp4 to mp3 with ai in the past and you have to give it a lot of information on how to do it we are adding you know documentation and stuff into code spring to make this easier so when you sign up to code spring if you grab a subscription down below, it might be it might already be in the product when you actually sign up. But it's doing a fairly good job so far at building this app for us. I mean, currently we've only been running for about 30 minutes and we've got most of the app already being built. The only thing we're struggling with is the conversion. So then we can go ahead and transcribe. And the transcription will be incredibly easy. Okay, so we've actually made an incredibly rookie mistake. I don't think I've actually installed YT DLP on my computer. I'm going to be honest with you, I thought I already had it installed from a previous app that I was building, but I must have uninstalled it. So we need to go ahead and actually install this. So hopefully it should work. Because at the moment it's saying it's not available on the server. In other words, it doesn't have the library enabled to actually download this video. So if you don't know how to do that, all you need to do is come into Cursor and you say, how do I download this onto my computer? Okay, and it's going to just basically run us through the steps. So we're going to go ahead and first of all install this. Then we just need to run this to actually install it. Once this is installed, it should be a lot easier for this app to work. And actually that gives me an idea for CodeSpring. We should probably alongside the tech stack have a step of set of instructions for installation of other things you need to install to make sure your app's actually going to work. So we'll add that soon. Okay, so now all that's installed, let's just give this another go. So we're going to start the download. Looks like it's actually downloading now. A little bit more promising. Cool. Video downloaded and converted to MP3. So that was significantly easier once we actually started to install the correct packages. <laughs> I'll definitely try and make it easier in the future for you guys if you're using CodeSpring. Right, so the next thing we need to do now is please build the, and then we're going to do PRD. We're going to transcribe the audio. 
make sure the transcription shows up in the dashboard page. And we're going to send that through. What I'm loving about GPT-5 is it seems to be incredibly precise. It's not hallucinating so much. The only problem I seem to have had with it is something like that error that we ran into, and I'm not cutting this out because it's it's real world vibe coding. Something like that error would have been picked up with something like Gemini or Claude. They would have let me know that I need to install it or within cursor, it would have automatically installed it. It's really weird that for some reason, GPT-5 didn't pick it up. I don't know whether that's because they've stopped the hallucination so much. So it's not, it's kind of assuming more stuff. I'm not really sure. But we're currently now integrating the transcription, which should be relatively easy to do. Okay, so it's now created the transcribe audio actions. What this is gonna do is take that MP3 file, send it off to OpenAI, and then from there, it should actually transcribe it. Now you will need to make sure you add your OpenAI API key, I'll show you how to do that, but it's pretty easy. All we're gonna do now is give this another go. So we're gonna grab the link for this TikTok video. We're gonna paste it in here, submit this, and what it should do is download it. So you can see it's downloading it. It's now converting it, has the MP3, and it's given us the transcript. So just like that, we've created a transcription tool that's incredibly easy to use, and it's plugged in to the CodeSpring boilerplate. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave this video here. I'm absolutely in love with the UI that it's generated. It's a really cool little simple app. It's incredibly cool how it's actually designed everything. I think the UI is really, really cool. In the next video, what I want to do is actually take a TikTok video, not only transcribe it, but we also want to extract the name of the song that's used in that video. So if you want to see me do that, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and come back for that next video. Now, if you would like to grab a CodeSpring subscription, the link is down below. It is very quickly becoming Google Translate for AI coding, and it is an incredibly powerful tool. Tool. You can plan out as many ideas as you want. You can even get this to work with tools like Lovable as well. We have starter kits for Lovable, Bolt, and Replit. I recommend you use the CodeSpring boilerplate with Cursor though, because that's what is going to be the best for you. We have courses teaching you how to build using AI to show you how to go from empty projects all the way to completely built that go into more depth than these YouTube videos. There's a full boilerplate with website already coded, payments already integrated, database already set up, and user accounts. And that's exactly what we used here for this video. Now, at the moment, if you go to codespring.app and you sign up, it's just £25 per month to get access to all of these powerful features to help you build and launch your first apps. If you want to grab that, the link is down below in the description. I cannot guarantee that price will remain the same forever. We are adding in new features, and the app is getting significantly better. And with that, the price will rise.